November is definitely not the best time to do 3D scanning outdoors. It's ridiculously grey and rainy time in Finland. But I have some interesting new findings regarding the iPhone's LiDAR scanner. So maybe I can sacrifice some time for my research in this bad weather. Hello everyone, it's Olli here again. I'm not really a big fan of this time period, but I do have some interesting observation about the scanning data that can be performed with the LiDAR scanner on the iPhone Pro. LiDAR comes from the words light detection and ranging, and it works on a bit of the same principle as radar. It uses a laser beam to measure distance and create a 3D point cloud. The laser beam on the iPhone or iPad Pros is not very strong, it only reaches about 5 meters. In 2020, Apple released the augmented reality development platform called ARKit with iOS 14 allowing developers to take advantage of the LiDAR functions. One of the most versatile applications that utilize ARKit is this 3D scanner app that you can download for free from Apple's App Store. The best part of this application is that you can export the 3D scanned data in almost any format. It utilizes the LiDAR scanner in two different ways. There is this standard option or this advanced mode where you can influence the point cloud capture with a few settings. I used this basic LiDAR scanner when I scanned these concrete sculptures outdoors. During the scan the program creates a 3D mesh structure on top of these shapes as the laser light detects it in the scene. And here we can clearly see that the mesh structure doesn't extend very far. When we scanned outdoors the 5 meters distance ends quite quickly and the phone scanner is not designed to capture large environments in that sense. It works best in small rooms and indoors. But what's interesting about this scanning mode is that the phone also takes pictures at the same time as the scan is being done. When the scan is complete and we are ready to process the mesh model, we notice that after a short while the textures appear into the model. Now when we look at the options we have to save the data out, we find fairly extensive list of different storage formats. The most interesting thing here is this all data option. This gives us the opportunity to export all the data collected during the process. So I select it and export it as a folder to the phone's file system. And when I manage to transfer this folder to my computer, I can better examine what data has been stored there. There are a bunch of these configuration images, which seems to be just these black BNG image files. Then there are a sequence of these depth map images, which has this black and white sea depth information. But what I'm particularly interested in are these frame images and the associated JSON files. For each image there is a JSON file stored with the same number. And when we look at the JSON data encoded with these matrix of numbers with the camera spatial coordinates and other useful information. In addition to these image data, the folder contains also these OBJ 3D models and this texture file. All these files made me interested and developed my own converter software, with which this LiDAR scanned data 
could be converted into a call map data. And as we know, call map data can be used directly in Gaussian splatting training. So I managed to develop such a small application in Python. And all we have to do is drag this all data folder into this field in my software. It tells us what it can find in the folder and we get information, for example, how many valid images were found and how OBJ files can be converted to a point cloud and utilize that texture file so that we can produce a colored point cloud. And all this will happen when we just press the generate call map data button. It takes a very brief moment and my converter creates a new output folder in the same location. And now this thing is the new source data folder that we can use for Gaussian splatting training in other programs. Like in PostShard. When we drag the file in here and before we start the actual training, we can take a look what kind of a camera placement and sparse point cloud the converter have managed to pick up from the LiDAR data. It seems that at least the camera location info is in correct form since all these camera markers seems to replicate the exact path how I scanned the sculpture in real life. The sparse point cloud itself looks very straightforward and simple. The points are in color and performs very linear pattern. But what kind of a Gaussian splatting we can get from here? As soon as we start the training process, we can see that the splat starts to gather around the sparse point cloud as they should, but pretty soon we can notice that the structure will mesh up and generate floaters and misaligned splats. So it doesn't look that good. It seems that the training process struggles with the Gaussians that should be placed in the background. And since the sparse point cloud only represent the points from the foreground object, the process is going to generate very meshy and ugly looking end result. So one function in the bow shot can help in this a bit, and it is this create sky model option. When we turn it on and start the training from the beginning, it starts to look a bit better Sky model creates this spherical structure around the model and it helps the process to place Gaussians much better to the background. But even with this method, training Gaussians requires quite a few extra iteration steps to get even a reasonably functional Gaussian model. The sparse point cloud produced by LiDAR is simply not accurate enough to produce a good looking end result. But since scanning with an iPhone is easy and fast, we can try different settings in other environments. For example, in this indoor sample where I scanned this violin on the table, I used a higher resolution in the LiDAR settings, which produce a much denser point cloud. And with denser point cloud, the Gaussian structure also becomes a little better. In such a situation, we can also utilize the PostShot's ROI option, which stands for Region of Interest. In this function, where we can activate such a bounding box for the parts of the Gaussian model that we want to focus on. The function therefore refines the calculation within this area. And even though Gaussians also appear outside this box, Beauchart focuses the training and more precise calculation only inside this box. This is practical if our intention is to produce a model of only a single object, then it is not worth using computing power on surrounding and background splats. This way we can only focus on the essential area in the model. But even this solution ultimately fails to produce the most accurate and good result that we are used to seeing in Gaussian splatting models. It could simply be due to the weakness of LiDAR, but I think that's not the point here. 
My broader idea here is the discovery that ARKit's LiDAR data can eventually be easily converted to Colmap format. When we have such open source data in use, it can be easily utilized on many platforms. This same Colmap conversion can also be dragged, for example, into Lichtfeld Studio. And it works there exactly the same way. And we can calculate Gaussians from the Colmap source. And at the Mac side, the Brass application can also utilize this. And you are able to train 3DGS locally, also with Apple computers. Although at the moment, end result with this method produces models from iPhone slider that looks almost as bad as the weather in November, it does give us a hope and idea that after all, LiDAR data is relatively easy to convert to a general multipurpose format. I must also mention that this same trick can also be done with the Kiri engine. The Kiri engine app has also this function where you can export all data in ARKit format after you have performed a scan with the LiDAR. The only difference is that it creates two separate zip files. So they need to be connected. There is one zip for the 3D model and another for the ARKit data. When you extract the 3D model and move this processed folder inside this Kiri Engine Nerf folder, then you have a complete dataset that can be dragged into my converter and generated to Colmap format. This is still a bit of an experimental version and the process may not necessarily produce a clear Gaussian model as the other app, but at least the principle is the same and it shows that it is possible to extract LiDAR data from other iPhone apps as well. So if you want to play with the iPhone's LiDAR option and generate Gaussian models, my converter software can be downloaded for free here from my code site. I leave the link in the description. I hope this was inspiring and gives you idea where this technology can be used, because I believe that it definitely extends beyond just 5 meters. There is a lot we can do with these lighters, and it does not have to be the unit you have on your phone. I have strong belief that this method can be extended to other LiDAR devices as well. But now let's go inside and hope November goes by very quickly. If you like the video, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'll continue and drive deeper in my research of a LiDAR data. Thanks for watching.